Okay. In the last video, we looked at uh, how to redirect uh, back to our home page of our shopping cart after we'd inputted some information into the database. What we'd like to do, I think, at this stage is have some indication for the end user that they've actually successfully put some information in. And ideally, we would like to show this information on every page. One sensible thing to do at this point is to is to consider the different ways in which you can do this. And I'm not going to go into this in any great detail at this point, but there is uh, an excellent article available on Smash Magazine's website which looks at some best practices in terms of shopping carts and discusses the various methods. I quite like this method so that on every page of the site you've got an indication of the number of items you've placed in shopping basket and the amount that you've currently uh, spent. And you've got the two options there. You've got the view shopping bag or view shopping cart and the buy now option. I, could, I think that works quite well. Uh, and that's the method I'm going to uh, try and employ on our site. So the first thing we have to do is to really set up the area on the screen where that information is going to be held. And if we look at my little spare code file for some code I prepared earlier, here I've got some echoed HTML which we can use as a holding area for the time being. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back to uh, my rock test one page and I'm going to sling that in at the top of the page. So all I'm doing here is quite simply using the echo function and echoing out some some text to appear on the page with a couple of or three line breaks in just to make it look a bit nicer. Come out to this page and refresh it and we've got a problem. So let's try and solve this problem. I wasn't expecting this to happen but it's an opportunity to excel. So we know it's on line 21. Let's go back to rock test 1. Let's look at line 21 and see if we can see that what the problem is. Well immediately I can because foolish me has forgotten to include the semicolon to close that line. Save that, go back again and lo and behold it works. So we've got the session ID output at the top there, that's just a reference at the moment. So we've got some hard coded uh, HTML items in cart 0 and the total equals 0. Okie doke. What we're we going to do? Well, the next thing we need to do is to think about the information that we uh, need to get from the database in order for this to work. Let's have a look at the database. Here it is. And if we want, at the moment, we, we can cheat a bit here, and I think we will cheat a bit. Um, as we've only got one item as restricting the user to, to one item. If we simply count up the number of items in that shopping cart relating to the session ID, we'll have the number of items that they bought. If we're allowing the user to buy more than one item, of course that won't be possible, but let's not run before we can walk. And for the time being we'll go for a simple count of the session ID entries and output that as the number of items bought. More problematic is getting the total price out because all we've got in the shopping cart is the product ID. We don't know the price. The price, of course, is held in the products table. So we can see that there's product ID number 7. To get that price, we need to go to the products table. We need to look up product number 7. There it is. And we need to get that price. If we've got five or six items in the shopping cart, we need to add all those prices up to get the full total. How do we do it? Well, we start by adding some SQL code. Let's have a quick look at one I've written earlier. And here it is. So let's take that for the time being. Let's go to cart across to rock test one. 
let's have a look at our existing code. Here it is. Uh, we've already got the data connection set up. We're selecting the right database. And we're already running a query that selects everything from table categories so we can output our category list to the table. So let's put it in after that. Let's bang it in there. And all I've done here is I've created a variable called cart display, which is going to hold the details using the MySQL query function. And I'm selecting the information I need. I want the cart ID so I can track it. I want the shopper ID. I want the price of the product from the products table. And I want the quantity. And if I can get those, I should be able to work with it. This next line of code is a bit more complex because what we're trying to do here is to create a join between those two tables because what connects them is a product ID. We've actually got to tell uh, the database this using SQL. And I'm saying once in a join, I'm in a join on table products where product ID on a table cart table agrees with product ID on the table products table. And the where statement is because I have to get it particular to this particular shopper. So, in theory, what this should produce is all this information, the cart ID, the shopper ID, the product price and product quantity. It'll grab them from these two tables and it'll do it where the shopper ID is in line with the current session ID, session ID that's been set for this particular user. Let's just test it at this point. Nothing should happen. And it doesn't. So that's good. So that tells me that the, the query is running. The next step I've got is to try and add up the number of items that have been returned or the number of rows that query has returned. And once again I can look at uh, my spare code where I've written a little bit of code earlier and I'm going to grab this. Take it across to rock test one and immediately after that query I'm going to plonk it in. And what I've done here is I've declared a new variable called number of rows or num rows. I'm using a PHP function which is a function that will automatically uh, count up the number of returned rows for me and I'm telling it which query I'm using and I'm using the cart display query. So will that work? Let's have a see. I save that, come back here, refresh and again I'm expecting nothing to happen and it hasn't. So I can assume at this point that the query has been run successfully, the number of rows has been passed to the variable, all I need to do is to output it. The problem I've got if I go back to rock count test or rock test one is that it's at the very top of the page where ideally I want to output that information and yet I'm not running this query and I'm not capturing the number of rows until line 35. All programs run sequentially so if I ran this now even if I put a variable in there it wouldn't pick it up because I'm not actually grabbing the value of that variable to there. So what I need to do is to do a little bit of messing about here with the order of the page and I'm going to do that by taking all this here so all the connections stuff from the database right down to the close me while uh, statement that outputs the category IDs I'm going to cut this and I'm going to sling it right at the top of the page there and because I've made quite a major change to the code there I'm just going to run it and test it I'm hoping it's going to work otherwise this video will be very long indeed and it has but it's outputted the cart details there so I've still not quite got it right so let's just pop back to the code and have a look where I put that so I can take this here and I want it to appear before all this here so I'm going to take that there I'm going to cut it and I'm going to show, show it where am I going to show it there I think there so in theory now I run I run my, my queries get me information then I run my cart information and then I run the while statement that outputs the category of each of the page will that work that looks good to me 
So I've got my session ID appearing at the top, just for references. Then I've got my little shopping cart uh, area here, and then my dynamic links there. Back to the page. Here's rock test one. Now, in theory, all I can do, all I need to do here, is I've got some hard coded zero in there. I've got a variable in there that should have captured uh, the number of rows. So I'm going to copy that variable name. I'm coming here and I'm going to using the mysteries of concatenation. So there's the end of my text. Here's the start of my dynamic area. And that should do it. Let's have a see. I'm going to put a little space there as well just to separate the uh, the number from the text. Will it work? I hope so. There's items in cart number seven. Let's check it. Let's go by keyboard. We'll buy the uh, the Korg piano. Very nice pianos. And the cart's gone up to eight. We're on a roll. Let's have a look at the code again. Because what we want to do is to add up the total here. Now if we look at the code, we can see that we've actually got all the information we need. Uh, we've got the cart quantity. We've got the product price. So for each entry, if we can multiply the quantity by the price and add it up, and then display the outcome of that, we should be on a winner. Let's have a look at the code I prepared earlier and try and get this working. Here's my spare code. And I'm going to take this code and copy it. Put it into my rock test one page. And once again, it will need to go before I want to output it. Here's where the, here's where the output needs to be. So I've got to execute this code before that happens. Sling it in there. And what I'm doing here is I'm working through the results of this query. There's my cart display query. I'm working through them. And I'm saying whilst I've got some information in that query, whilst I've got some rows to work on, I'm going to declare a variable called cart total. And cart total will begin at zero. So I'm saying for every loop of that query, take the existing value of cart total and add to it the product price times the quantity. When it's finished its loop, that variable should hold the full amount. So what I can then do is to take this here and again using the mysteries of concatenation copy that variable and shove it in there. Will it work? I hope so. Let's refresh the page. Gracious me. Let's just test it by going to buy some PA speakers. We've tried the Dynacord lights before. We don't like them. We're going for the Behringer. There they are. Looking beautiful. Redirects to page one. Increases our amount. Try again just to prove it works. There's a Gibson. I know. Looking up to me. We can go on shopping all day now. Look at that. So, fully functional, fully working. And of course, if you want this code working on every page of the site, which should be sensible, all you need to do is to take that code and copy it across and place it in each page where it's needed. The next stage in the development will be to create uh, an actual shopping cart page where the user can look at everything they bought in more detail, add items or delete items, uh, change quantity, and then choose to go to a buy now page if they so wish to do so. But that'll be for next week, and we'll come back to that in, in due course.